Well, the uh, programme from last night. Well, Homeland's not alone. We've seen it before with Band of Brothers, which aired in the Bush years, or in the film The Life and Death of Colonel Blimp, made in 1943, which carried a pretty explicit message, hardening a British public for all-out war. So can drama ever be used as propaganda for a government's foreign policy? Join me now, a former CIA special operations officer, now turned author, Elliot Ackerman, or our real-life Peter Quinn, if you like. Elliot Ackerman, thanks for joining us. Um, I compared you to Quinn, do you do you recognise that world? Uh, well, I wouldn't compare myself to Quinn, <laughs> um, but you know, I think that uh, the you know the world portrayed in Homeland. I mean, you know, it's one of stories. Um, it's one of a lot of drama. You know, I think the reality is is frequently you know a lot more banal. Do you believe that drama can ever actually start to influence a, an audience? reaction to foreign policy have you seen that in the kind of way that these dramas are, are played out you know i mean it's famously been said that you know life life imitates art um and you know you mentioned band of brothers in the intro to this segment you know something i always thought was fascinating was that band of brothers you know which is sort of very much a classic World War II story, good guys versus bad guys. You know, it premiered on September 10th, 2001. And, you know, it sort of represented, you know, at least in the United States, sort of the zeitgeist of that time, which was, you know, one that kind of craved those types of stories. And I think if you were to air Band of Brothers today, you know, it would meet with a much more cynical audience. So I don't know if necessarily, you know, if there's a direct correlation, but I think that, you know, the films we have, the art we have, it represents the time in which it's created. That's really interesting, and I don't want to push this too far, but do you think that Band of Brothers, you know, if you like, softened up the public, made it easier uh, for Bush's foreign policy to go into Afghanistan and Iraq, or is that, is that too far? You know, I think that's a little bit too far. I think it just, it maybe just shows kind of, you know, where, at least in the United States, the, the country was at. Um, you know, if you remember when Bush was elected president, you know, I think there was a lot of, a lot of Americans were sort of, you know, weary with all of this scandals of the Clinton years. You know, they wanted sort of a wholesome presidency. Mm. You know, there was, that was when Tom Brokaw's book, The Greatest Generation, came out. There was sort of this hunger for a throwback. And I think, I think that hunger sort of led to, you know, U.S. And, you know, and British involvement in wars that were far more complicated than sort of the good versus evil metric we had in the Second World War. Okay, and well, I think if you look at a show, you know, like A Homeland right now, I mean, it's a very complicated story uh, and we're living in a very complex world. And I wanted to pick up on that. I mean, what Homeland seems to show you is it's it's messiness, that there is no clear one side versus another side, that foreign policy is kind of, you know, it's sort of complicated and, and impossible to sort of see in a clear visual path. Do you think that reflects where Obama is? I think that probably reflects where Obama Obama is and where any variety of international leaders are at right now. I mean, it's very difficult if you look at, you know, the Middle East to, uh, to parse it in terms of, you know, good versus evil. I mean, if you look at the American experience right now, we are fighting in Iraq with the Iranians as our sort of ostensible allies. And if you look in Syria, we're engaged in Syria and the Iranians are our enemies. And it's very difficult to know who's on your side and who isn't on your side. And that's whether you're American Russian, Syrian, Iranian, um, you know, none of the conflicts today kind of break down along, uh, along simple lines. And do, do they ever watch and see audience reaction to these dramas? Is that something that's monitored? I mean, you're writing now. Oh, I don't, I don't think there's any like central office in the United States government that's monitoring audience reaction to, you know, to programs like Homeland necessarily, you know, but obviously, you know, these things are in popular culture and, you know, we all see them and they maybe influence the way we're looking at current events.